Hello, isn't it fantastic to spend a whole day talking about the very thrilling topic of copyright? Um, as I think you might have said in Polish, I'm not sure, so I'll say it again. Uh, my name is Karolina Andersotter, and I recently completed a master's degree in library and information science at Uppsala University in Sweden. And I'm currently a postgrad student at of King's College London. This uh, short presentation is without slides, so you will have to look at me or this background instead. And it's based on my MA dissertation, Cross-Border Copy Fight, European Libraries Rethinking the InfoSource Directive, which focuses on the argumentation of library organizations and European national libraries in their contributions to the European Commission's public consultation on the review of the EU copyright rules. So we might ask, why is it important for libraries to be engaged in copyright? Well, a library is historically a place to keep the business, legal, historical and religious records of a civilization. Libraries have changed over the course of history, from clay tablets in Babylonian temples to manuscripts in medieval Europe, to the public libraries of the 19th century and to the information resource and service that does not even require a building. However, their cultural role has been consistent. To acquire or provide access to books, periodicals, and other media that meet the educational, recreational, and information needs of their users. A general note on libraries and copyright, though, is that the European research at the moment seems to be centered on copyright as an information literacy issue. Studies have been done in Bulgaria, Croatia, France, and Turkey on the copyright literacy comp competence of library and information professor professionals. Uh, librarians' everyday work is affected by copyright, not only when making deals with journal pub publishers, but also in interaction with users, where librarians are consulted as an authority concerning what is and is not allowed concerning the library's material and copyright. This is, of course, in one way problematic, as librarians uh, don't have the legal expertise. Well, I guess some do, but, but most don't. Uh, and one concern of the copyright literacy studies was that the librarians have a tendency to be a sort of copyright police. Uh, they would often suggest users to be more careful about copyright infringing than is necessary, just in case. For example, because concepts such as fair dealing is a really hard to interpret gray zone. In my view, it is necessary uh, that copyright is not just discussed as legislation, but as a cultural phenomenon uh, affecting people in both the digital and the physical environment. environment. This has, of course, been touched, about, uh, touched upon by many today, so I'm glad to know that I'm not alone in this uh, view. And now we'll, be, we'll go back to my thesis again after this short introduction to libraries and copyright. So the EU copyright rules are, as you probably know, regulated by the InfoSOS Directive, uh, which holds a set of non-mandatory limitations and, and exceptions that the member states can choose to implement in their national legislations. Now, about 28% of the consultation contributions from institutional users uh, were from library stakeholders. Uh, so that's approximately 80 replies, uh, and that is libraries and library organizations. And my main findings in my research were that library stakeholders in general are strongly supportive of EU copyright reform, arguing that democratic values as well as the EU single market would benefit from it. Though it is well worth noting that there are also library stakeholders who argue against legislative change, either suggesting extended collective licenses as a way to deal with copyright across borders, or arguing that the principle of the member state's sovereignty is more important than a pan-European copyright legislation. Concerning limitations and exceptions, many of the library stakeholders propose either a general fair use exception in EU copyright law or adding several specific exceptions, most notably ones for text and data mining, e-lending, that publicly funded research should be published open access and that contracts and technical protection measures cannot override the limitations and exceptions. Uh, library stakeholders from the Central and Eastern European member states are more supportive of a copyright reform than their Western European counterparts. They do not mention in the con contributions to the consultation replies like uh, licenses as a possible solution, while, for example, Scandinavian libraries tend to think li licenses is a swell idea, probably because uh, we have used this system already for some time and wouldn't, wouldn't like to change because it's easier that way, I guess. I don't know. I don't 
really like that solution myself. Uh, in general, the library stakeholders agree that the interoperability, exchange and cooperation in activities and projects that involves several EU member states suffers from the current copyright legislation. So in short, something has to be done. Uh, a fair use exception introduced uh, to the emphasis directive is glorified by many national libraries as a law that will change the circumstances the European libraries work with for the better. However, we're considering that there is research that, that concludes fair use is a complicated, uncertain tool to work with. Evidence suggests fair use would not at all be an obvious solution to the problems libraries face today. What also complicates matters, and is, in my view, discussed all too little, is the different legal traditions of Europe. The Berne Convention results from negotiations between the different legal systems, like the paradigm between copyright and droit d'auteur, between civil law and common law traditions, and this constant dichotomy of uh, copyright and droit d'auteur, the economic and moral rights, is, it is still apparent in the discussion about copyright and in national copyright legislation. Uh, one important thing about copyright is, of course, also the concept of the author. Like, we could look, have the Foucauldian view of the author as symbolizing a privileged moment of individualization in the history of ideas, knowledge, literature, philosophy, and the science. And we can compare this to the concept of the Gutenberg parenthesis, which, in, it na in its name, suggests that the possibility to mass produce cultural products with help from the printing press, which is highly beneficial for the author concept, is now being replaced with a digital media culture that provides the possibility of sampling, remixing, borrowing, reshaping, appropriating, and recontextualizing indefinitely. And Foucault does say in his writings that the function of the author does not affect all discourses in the same way at all times and in all types of civilizations. So we have this changing role of the author whose genius and creations is what copyright aims to protect today. So it's a whole, whole sort of new philosophical view of it that we have to adapt to. Now, modern technology does not only bring competition concerning the sheep digital copy devaluing a sales prospect. There is also the question about robot authors, uh, that is the authors behind computer generated books, which are becoming increasingly common in online bookstores. The power to produce and distribute uh, intellectual and cultural works is central to the economic aspect of copyright. The notions of automatic copying and automatic authoring do not seem at home within the Gutenberg parentheses, indicating that we are indeed in a paradigm shift. The concept of both the author and the publisher is blurring, as well as the line between producer and consumer. The content of these non-fiction robot books certainly can be correct, but the lack of editorial work at times is uh, apparent, overly apparent. Even so, libraries still purchase these titles for their collections, and some of them have also defended the acquisitions with the user's demand of books on the topic in question. So what we will have to ask ourselves is, uh, is a robot author an author, and does it have any more moral rights? And if the robot author doesn't, who holds the copyright to the title in question? The programmer, the provider of the big data that the robot author used, based his book on? I mean, it's a very complicated question in many ways, especially when you look at the moral rights. Uh, as we can see, our uh, concept of copyright today might as well call for reform tomorrow. Technology will always bring new questions, compared, for example, with the Star Trek teen TNG episode, Measure of a Man, uh, which discusses the android being, which is very interesting. Now, it is not only the concept of the author that needs rethinking. A copy is created when a user logs onto the internet. So the power of the web cache, in fact, makes EU citizens who use the internet on a regular basis recidivist, since copyright infringement is unavoidable when using the internet. Now, back to the libraries. What the wish for a fair use exception reflects is the libra library's needs for flexible solutions. Fair use is not a perfect solution, but it is regarded as better than status quo. And perhaps the argument is also based on the balance of probability. A head over heels reform of the Infosys Directive uh, is not plausible, but a step-by-step -step revision of the European, European copyright legislation might be conceivable. And the fact that libraries construct arguments around a single market also indicates that a step-by-step -step approach to achieving copyright reform is seen as a better method than to call for a European-wide library commons. Uh, of course, the libraries will form their arguments related in accordance with their supposed impact. In my analysis, for example, I used the theoretical framework of the relations between structural, instrumental, and discursive power, and that, that is a way to 
look at how the libraries could hope to influence legislation in this context, basically. Uh, the need for mandatory exceptions is another conclusion from the study. According to the library stakeholders, this would have a positive effect on both the economy and the society as a whole. Sharing information across borders, often via the internet, is now an everyday phenom phenomenon, and the legislation should reflect societal norms rather than restricting them. The library st stakeholders have an interesting discussion on democratic values, innovation, and European cooperation, and how those aspects are at risk within the current legislative fr framework. So in this case, it's not just about choosing a copyright legislation, it's about choosing the society we want. Thank you.